Welcome, everybody. Uh, as I said, this is the first session we're having today. Uh, as I said, if you look at the schedule, there's a, a lot of good presentations and even some awful lot of good presentations on the second track. However, the, if you miss a presentation, they will be posted uh, up on the um, APCUG uh, YouTube uh, video website so you can have these and use these. Uh, and if, if you didn't see, I will be taking questions uh, during the presentation. So if you have any questions, feel free to tap, uh, put them into the chat box, and uh, Francis will ho holler at me and let me know. Um, <clears throat> this is the summer uh, 2014 virtual technology conference, uh, session one um, and track one. And we're going to be talking about folders, networking, and storage, uh, which basically all goes together. Uh, I start each of my presentations with a warning that I am not an expert, and this is just a collection of my opinions, ideas, and research. So if you right-click on something and it goes away, don't blame me. Um, anytime you're talking about storage and networking, what you're going to be talking about is what you're doing with files. Files are the basic element of any computer system um, that you're using and manipulating. Um, you have computer files that run programs. Uh, you have computer files that let you operate um, PowerPoints. You've got Word documents. They can come in any sort of a type. Uh, you can come and get them in email attachments. And you get these files, or you create these files, and you have to store them somewhere. Um, and you got to save them. And some of the things we're going to be talking about today is uh, some strategies for saving them and what you can do with these files. Um, one of the things I want to remind everybody is, through this presentation, is that right-clicking on the mouse is your friend. You can right-click. Everybody knows you right-click. You're going to have a whole bunch of different options. When you right-click on files, you can open with a different version. You know, and one of the other things you got to remember is that, especially, is the, the cut and copy to move from one place to another. Now, again, this is Windows uh, that we're talking about, but the uh, strategy of storing everything could be run on a Mac or any Linux machine. But uh, since I'm more familiar with, with uh, the Windows operating system, we're going to be talking about specific ways of doing things. We're going to talk about Windows. But the Apple and the Macs also have, and the and Linux also have ways of, of manipulating files. Um, and again, as I said, with Windows and other systems, you can drag and drop. There are usually 15 different ways to do the same thing. Okay, you know, the basic thing you start out with files. Okay, how are you going to organize files? Well, the best way to organize files is not to put them in my documents and have to sort and run through every little thing and try to find them. You put them in the folders, and you can name the folders. And one of the things I'll remind you is if when we get into File Explorer, we'll talk a bit more, you can right-click anywhere in File Explorer, and whatever it is, create new, and you can create a new folder, you can name it. And then you move your files and to the storage spot. Um, and you can name your folders to indicate what's in there. Um, and it's just like starting with an outline form. You can start out, you can have multiple folders and inside of another folder. There's no really limit. Um, so that you can have, you know, you can have, like you remember in the, my documents, you've got pictures. Then you can have uh, my pictures of of, of my family pictures, then you can have your brother's family pictures or your grandkids. So you can sort these things out however you want to remember them. And, you know, like when you're doing pictures, one of the things people do is to date and the time the pictures of when they were taken so they can know what they're doing. Um, there's a lot of strategies we can get into about uh, tagging the, the files and so you know what it is or you can do a search. Uh, but, you know, there are many different things. So what are you going to do with the folders? Okay. 
Well, you can store the folders many, many different places, and that's one of the things we're going to be talking on, how to organize these folders and what to do with these folders. Um, so you want to make these folders as descriptive as you can so you know what, you, what you're looking for. Um, so you don't want to call stuff my stuff or, or new stuff. So you want to be able to be descriptive as to, to what's in the folder to be able to, uh, to be able to find it when you're doing searches. Because when you do a search and explore, you, you, you search for the, the, the file name and you also search for the folder name so you can find what you're doing. Okay. How do you organize folders? Okay. Uh, my documents is a place that a lot of people store folders. Um, but you, you can store a folder anywhere on a hard drive or any hard drive or in the cloud. And that's where we're going to be uh, talking as to how to organize. And you have to organize it in a system that is, you know, something you can remember and you can remember how you organize. Because I bet everybody here is saying, wait a second, I, I know I got that file. Where exactly is that file? So you've got to remember where you're doing it. And folder organization is very crucial into this. Uh, so it's just like a file cabinet. You've got a file cabinet. You may have a hard drive, or you may have a, a big folder like pictures, or, uh, you know, IRS stuff, my taxes stuff. And then you get the smaller. You can have smaller folders inside the, the drawer. So you just go through. And you can go layers, and you label it so you can find it. So it's very important that you have an organization that you are familiar with. It's just like, uh, you know, you're running your file cabinets, but it's just a virtual file cabinet. And just to remember, File Explorer is your friend. Uh, I don't know exactly what it's called on uh, the Apple, but it's basically all the same thing. This is... You know, how it's set up, you've got a list of your computers, and you've got a list of files on your computer. And you just click on it, and, you know, you can go dig deeper. Um, and File Explorer is system independent. So it, it changes a little bit about where things are, but the, the strategy of, of how it operates is the same no matter whether you're well, not too many people are running XP, but it's the same as XP, uh, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows 8, and coming soon to Windows 9. So I'm assuming here that either in September or the other December that Francis is going to have a presentation on the uh, new Windows 9 that's coming out. But from what I understand, the file explorer and the way files are, are handled is going to be very similar. You know, you hit the file, you put it in the folder, you put the folder another folder and you can run it on a hard drive. And as you can see, I don't know how well this is coming up on your computer, but you know, you've got I've got mine organized in the favorites, which is basically my uh, uh, external cloud storage and files that I go to an awful lot. As you can see the desktop and then you got downloads, it puts in recent places. Then I got my cloud storage. And uh, then you go down to your libraries, which is uh, something that was new to Windows 7, but in Windows 8, and uh, therefore you can you can hide that if you didn't really want to. It's just a, another way of taking your your filing cabinet and, and and putting a shortcut so you can go there. And as you see, the final thing down below is the the computer, which you got your different drives. I have on this computer that I. Uh, this snapshot, this is my home computer, I've got two drives. I've got a local disk, which is the, the, the program files, and then i got the, the what I call program and data. Um, a lot of people recognize or, or recommend that you store your data on a separate hard drive or at least a separate partition from your operating system because if you've got to restore the operating system or the operating system, goes belly up, then you're not going to lose all your data. Uh, I also put my program files, every time it, you know, they ask where to insert it, I'll come in and change my C to a D so it goes down to, to D programs. 
so that I have all the programs over there, and the only thing I'm running on my uh, C drive is the operating system, and to keep that as, as clean as possible. Um, again, remember that my documents, my music, and everything all appears on the hard drive with the C drive, so you got to make sure that you get those things backed up. Uh, I try to, uh, in my documents, I try to keep minimal stuff there and then uh, use that to put stuff in, and then I take it and file it away and over on my D drive or my other drives that are important. So uh, if I'm going too fast or uh, you can't hear me, please let me know. Um, and here's, we talked a little bit, I've got my Dropbox folder here. We talked a little bit about the cloud, but uh, as you can see, I've got quite a few clouds and folders in my Dropbox. And, uh, okay, um, that uh, there's quite a few, you know, folders in there, and this is what I share. I've got a lot of storage on Dropbox because it said i got a lot of friends to, to sign up and give me storage. Um, and the good thing about Dropbox is I can store files in there that are accessible on any of my other computers, on my phone, uh, and on my uh, tablets and laptop, so that uh, you can get to them. And all you got to do is you treat it just like you would uh, anything in File Explorer. You just move it there, and it automatically updates. And the good thing about it is in Dropbox, there is a copy actually physically sitting on your hard drive, and it is synced to the cloud. So you have a copy in two places. So if something happens to your hard drive, you still have a copy on the cloud. So that you don't really have a lag. If you don't have an Internet connection, you can still get to it. And I've got quite a few cloud uh, connections and storing stuff. The only thing to worry about is if you have... Uh, Way too many um, cloud. I had. I thought I had to narrow down my cloud spaces, even though I had a whole bunch of them, because I was it, couldn't remember what which uh, file, which cloud storage I had these different files, so I could get to it. Uh, okay. Now, what we're going to talk about is uh, network devices, and we're going to be talking about you. You got your file folders. You got your files, you got your folders, and you got them organized on your your hard drive. But you know your computer is, you know, you need to back it up, or you can store it someplace else. So you want to build a network, and device networking uh, is just not computers anymore. You know what? You know what is device networking? You know why do we do it, and do we really care? Okay, let's look at the definition. Uh, I am not going to stand and, and read the, the definition of a computer network to you because you can read it, and I'm sure that you don't like PowerPoint presentations where the, the, the person, all they do is just read from the, the data. But basically, it's a, uh, uh, a telecommunication network that connects different devices. And it, the Internet itself is a computer network because it connects a whole bunch of different devices. And, uh, you know, you can have two devices in a network or you can have a whole bunch of devices in a network. And a device can be many, many different things. Server, personal computers, laptop, phones, uh, watches are now becoming part of the network. The old way networks were put together is sort of a hodgepodge. You know, you had wires going back here and wires going all there. And I'm sure some of you remember or had the, the back of your computer uh, look something like this. Oh, okay. Um, you know, the back of your computer looked like this, and it was really difficult. And uh, now here is the my network. As you can see at the time I took this picture, I'm not sure. I have a laptop, I have a main computer, I have another computer, and I have, have a home server. Uh, and the, the home server I have is, uh, it was running Windows Home Server, now I'm running uh, Windows uh, 
essentials, uh, Linda Server Essentials 2012. Uh, but as you can see that I've got different folders and then files within those folders, and then I have folders within the files so we can get to it and it's stored. Um, so then, you know, you can get to it again. Remember that, you know, you can search each of these different devices, you know, from the device you're on. And if you have it set up, which is another class on networking, you know, you can access, you know, if I have my laptop, I can, if I'm connected to the network through my, uh, uh, to my bio PC, which is my home PC, uh, you know, we can get in and get the different apps. I just have uh, the folders that I want to be able to access on the fly uh, in here uh, because, again, I have most of my stuff hooked up through the, the cloud, which is easy to get to. Uh, the only thing that I really need a computer uh, network is I do is my home server where I store my movies and videos and uh, music and those folders that I'm not using on a daily basis. Uh, so that it's a backup because I've got it redundant and it, it's backed up. Um, we need to get some class. We need to get some questions here. I'm going to get through this uh, rather quickly because I'm trying not to get too detailed. I'm just trying to give you an overflow overview of how these uh, devices are set up and, and what you can do. But you can see that you can share files with with the computers. You can do it through the uh, cloud, or you can do it through a network of different computers. And again, the computers can be set up on a wireless uh, network, a wired network. Uh, if you go with a wired network uh, within your own uh, router system, you can get gigabyte speeds going between the computers. Wireless is not got that fast yet. It's moving and eventually will we'll give you very fast speed. But uh, if you've got gigabyte Ethernet cables or running between computers, you can move files uh, very quickly, and it works wonders for streaming. Um, you know, you can usually stream on the Internet, I mean, stream off the Internet or stream, you know, on your computer. So I can stream from my uh, server to uh, a different computer and then, you know, pick it up on my TV. And, you know, running with TVs is another device, and that's where it's going to be coming, is that we're going to be having all sorts of mobile devices connected to the cloud. Okay. As you see this, you know, you can see one computer, and they're all sort of networked together. This is sort of how our home network is, is set up. You know, we have one main computer, and then all of them are, are wired uh, uh wired together so they're connected to the speed. Now, as I said, if you're getting through, um, if you're going wirelessly, everybody's really going wirelessly, and you can set up your different devices. You can see your, your phones, your, your, your uh, servers, your music, your TV, uh, you, you know, your different boxes. You have everything set up. Uh, you know, so that you can, you know, connect wherever you are and go from there. Um, okay. Ah, okay. Free time. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. As I said, this is you got different storage. And one of the things we're going to talk about is, you know, the thinking is on these different devices is done on the fly. So, you know, when you update it on one place, uh, you uh, updated on it, it's automatically updated on the other. Okay, now, now this is cloud-based networking. Uh, these are just some of the uh, other devices and other places out there. Um, again, you know, if you get too many, you got to remember where you've got. You can do, get different, uh, you know, sizes and speeds coming from there and saving your your uh, files from one device to another. And one good thing about some of these is Dropbox and uh, Copy, SkyDrive, which is now OneDrive. Uh, you can, uh, you know, you can share the files with somebody that's not on your network. 
you can send them an email with the link and they can go get the file. So, you know, now you can, uh, you know, you, you email is limiting to probably maybe uh, 10 megabytes, if that, on an email. But if you want to share a movie or, you know, you've got a, a video of your grandkids or a video of your trip to, uh, you know, to Wall Drug Store, you know, you can put that up and then send the link out that people go and download it directly, and so therefore you're not having any uh, issues on, on the email. And again, you know, if, then no one can get to it unless they are they know the email. So it's, it's relatively secure on how these things get done. Um, and again, as you do things in the cloud, you know, here's different cloud storage, what you get free. And again, uh, one of the, the nice things uh, about this is that, you know, I, you see I've got favorites over here that uh, got, yes, they show up in your favorites. So they, the cloud storage shows up as a, as a folder on your hard drive so you can access it directly from, from my, uh, from your you know, file explorer, which makes life a whole lot easier uh, to, deal with. And, you know, some of these you can use to uh, back up files. Uh, so, you, you know, because of different different uh, size limitations, you know, you can back up, you know, your, your, your pictures to one of them or pictures to two of them um, and your, your movies to the other, your other files. And you, you really don't need to, you know, put up your, your we probably don't want to put up your tax returns or anything, but most of these are fairly secure. Um, and again, they, they show up in your favorites on your Explorer so that you can, you know, very easily uh, grab, you know, the files and, and move them around. And again, you know, if you be in the Windows 7 or higher, you know, you can, you know, break two screens up on one side or the other, and so you can move it back and forth. And, you know, you can have your hard drive on one and the cloud on the other so you can see what you're moving and what you need to get and make it very easy. Uh, yeah, and it's, the one question, yes, as you said, I, I did this picture and I just realized that, that, that uh, SkyDrive is now OneDrive. Uh, and uh, as you can see in, on this right here, this is a Windows 7 machine that I've got these for, and, and on Windows 7, you have to download a, a program or a setup to put OneDrive on your computer. On Windows 8, 8.1, and I'm assuming higher up, OneDrive, you, since you sign in with your, your, your one live account, it automatically goes in and it works from the cloud and set up from your computer, which is one disadvantage, but it, it, it works. Um, Yeah, and as I said, some of these uh, different programs, you know, work on different languages and different OSs, so that makes it real nice. And again, you know, that if you've got a, a Dropbox, uh, it does it. Dropbox is, is platform independent, so you can have a Windows uh, machine, you can have a Linux machine, you can have a a iPad, you know, or a Windows phone or an Android phone and you can still connect to it um, so that uh, you can, you know, you can share your files across platforms and you don't have to worry about plugging it in and, and doing it on the file because right now with the network speed, on the internet speed, you can get fast enough to be able to go a file that's real big. Um, you know, advantages to cloud networking, you can get it from anywhere you are. And uh, you're not limited, you know, to where you do it. You can get it from home. You can get it from, uh, you know, if you at the office, or you know, you get it in mobile devices. And uh, so that makes it real, real nice. Other ways to stay connected. Everybody was talking that, uh, you know, you're going to need storage. And you know, here's an, another. 
item you got to think about is what do you have to store? I've got a home server, uh, which is my home server now is, is redundant, and I got uh, about eight terabytes <clears throat> of usable space. So that means I've got close to maybe 14 terabytes of of hard drive space in the machine. Uh, not that I need every, but I just said I got it all hooked up so that uh, it was expandable and I'm taking all my movies and taking all my DVDs and burning them so I got them on the, the network and I can watch them for wherever I want to. And again, you know, you got to determine how much space you need and what you want to store. And uh, you have the ability, let's go back here and look. You have the, the home server uh, device you can use. And is I believe someone talked a little bit earlier that you can have a, a network storage, which uh, similar to a home storage, you just uh, it's just basically the uh, the the you, it's sitting on your network, and it could be running USB through your uh, your router, or it could be Ethernet, and you just have hard drives on there, and you're using it as a hard drive. And it's just a, a simple little system set up. A home server usually has a, uh, you have to run a, a, uh, a program on it. Microsoft's got one, Essentials. Or uh, Windows 881 runs very nicely as a uh, home server because you can combine the drives and run the backup. And the key thing with you have with the home server is you want to be able to back up the key files that are on your regular different computers and also store files on the home server so you can need them. Um, and then, you know, you, you have a hub, you just store other computers, and uh, so you can run the different files from there. And uh, as I said, next other server. Uh, you know, you've got external drives. As you can see here, we've got uh, two types of external drives. One is the uh, the the, the, the light copy one, you can see that you can it's just um, you can put it in your pocket. You just store drives on it, and you can carry it with you. Uh, I have one that I've got. Uh, I put movies on, so when I'm traveling, then I can plug it into my uh, laptop, and I have access to my movies or TV shows or whatever I have uh, downloaded. Uh, you know, again, you know, with the TVs, you got the you know, you've got to, you can always go online and get some of the stuff, but, uh, and, uh, you can share, um, so you can share it, or if you want to, uh, share files and, you know, you got more than what's on a flash drive. Um, because I think that the, these, uh, you know, these, these storage, the portable storage external drives, because you just plug it in, you don't need any power or anything else. Is very uh, easy to store big files with, or to move share big files between computers. Uh, the other one is uh, the external drive that actually you have to plug in to a power source and then plug it in uh, to your computer. These aren't really meant to be portable per se. I mean, you can move them, but usually you have them attached. Is that you can use them as a backup? Or you can have, you know, you know, just extra storage on your computer. And a lot of people use them because you can, you know, swap them out, you know, if you want to and take them off site. And uh, go from there. I mean, they make it, you know, they make these things in, in five, up to five terabytes. And, you know, if you're running on Windows 8, it will recognize the, 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 the four and five, three, four and five terabytes without any problem, and you can store it. Again, you know, a lot of people do not really need, you know, it, you know, they have trouble filling up a terabyte drive. So, again, you have to determine <coughs> excuse me, the size of uh, what you want to store. I mean, if you're putting all your uh, DVDs and all your pictures onto, uh, onto the computer, then you probably won't have something to, to say. Uh, I recommend if you got anything you really want to save, that you probably want to move it someplace, have it on an external drive uh, that's connected to the computer, 
because if someone gets in and hacks uh, or does something, you get the hard drive, you know, and you lose the operating system, you know, and the, and the drive goes belly up, you've got your pictures and everything stored someplace else or backing them up. Um, Do, do, do. That's a good question. Um, the uh, usually the I'm not really sure that much about uh, how to. I know you can encrypt a uh, a, uh, a you know files. I don't know if you can encrypt the whole drive. Um, the easiest way for ransomware is to make sure you've got good antivirus and and good. Uh, um, you know, malware bytes or something on the computer to uh, to to avoid having to get the, the ransomware. Uh, and again, usually that they when they on the ransomware they just they, they mess up the operating system. I'm not really sure sure if I don't think they're going to mess up all the files, uh, but you may not be able to, to get to the files. That's the reason if you got them off site. You know, you can quickly unplug. Uh, you know what's going on because if you get something you unplug unplug the power, and you can unplug the external drive so it doesn't get connected out there and go too far. Um, I don't know if that boosted that into your question. Um, yeah, as I said, I suggest in backup, you know, there are many, many, many reasons to different to backup. As I said, I would say it's probably more common that your hard drive is going to go belly up or something's going to happen to it, then you run into a uh, major malware problem. But again, you know, safe, safe surfing will avoid you having the, the, the malware problem. Uh, does it encrypt cloud storage? Okay, well, you got to be real careful then um, about, you know, what you're clicking on and what you're doing. Um, Yeah, that's a good one. Is to say if you if you know what you're doing, sandbox, AVS, um, do that. And you said you got you know the different programs now, and you can go through and uh, fix it so that uh, you know you, you just be, be careful what you're clicking on. And most of the the the, the uh, I know AVS does and a couple other does prevent you from uh, uh, um. That, are, that have uh, that have uh, um, so you can connect. I'm sorry, I, my trend of thought just went. Um, so again, as I said, someone made a good suggestion is that uh, with these portable drives, you know, it, it, some of them, you know, if you're, you're backing up, you know, sensitive data, uh, you know, it's only connected to the computer, you know, when you're making the backup. So you have it, and sometimes if it's real sensitive, you know, you may want to take it off site um, from there. And uh, again, saying, you know, if you've got a computer and you've got a backup and it's not connected to the computer, if you know you get robbed or something, they're going to take the computer, but you still got your, your sensitive data. Um, um, as, I said, I, as I said, on web surfing, I know that people... Uh, you just be careful about where you're surfing. Uh, I normally don't go to places that are too obscure. I don't click on links that I don't know where I'm going. And uh, sometimes I'll pop up with, uh, I, I said I use AVAS and I pop up even on some of the pages. That they'll pop up and say, you know, you, there's a potential site on this. you got to be careful. Uh, and... Uh, you know, as long as you stay surfing, you, you should be relatively safe. You know, again, if, if you're going to be going to places, you know, as Francis says, you could do it within a, a virtual machine. Um, you know, that that type of thing, many types you can do it. Um, you know, you got the cloud storage. Again, you know, it's relatively safe. Nothing's 100% safe, but usually, you know, they're they're encrypted. Uh, there are a couple of them that I talk about that uh, 
if, you know, you, you, you sign up, and if you lose your password, you lost your site because it said the site doesn't even have the password. So it, it's just so encrypted that the, you know, you can't get in. I mean, nobody else, if they hacked in, they can't unencrypt it because it said there's no way of unencrypting it. Um, so again, you know, there's a whole different strategy on cloud storage. Um, and just as we're getting ready to sort of close up here, running towards the end. You know, remember you can store your files and folders anywhere. You just need to come up with a, a strategy that you're comfortable with. Um, you know, there's a sense of, uh, you know, how well you can do it. You know, it's just like, you know, walking or driving your car. Uh, you know, you don't go down a, a street you don't know about in the middle of night if you're not familiar with what you're doing. I mean, there's just certain things you just don't do. And, you know, that if you're, uh, you know, if you've got a site or something you need to check out, uh, usually most sites, unless you get there or, you know, that are reputable, you know, will get, will pick up and you're not going to have the problem. Um, but you can, well, this is more of a storage and sort of online security. Um, so again, you know, you can store anywhere. You can store it on my documents if that's easier for you. If you're not storing that much stuff, you're just using the surfing and that type of stuff, you know, you probably don't need to get outside of my documents and just have a backup so you know what you, you've got a backup. Uh, but if you've got a lot of files, a lot of pictures, you know, I'd recommend, you know, putting it on a separate drive, uh, at least a separate drive within the machine, preferably an, an external drive or a, a portable drive, you know, that you can plug in when you want to move the pictures over there so they're securely stored. But you can put them anywhere. You've got, a, you've got the network, you know, storage. you got the home server. I mean, you, you know, you can just sort of make your own with a couple external hard drives. Uh, and now with USB 3 coming out, uh, it's relatively fast, and you can move files back and forth. Okay. Francis, I'm sure, would love to give a presentation on, on sandboxing. Um, uh, and you said, remember, you hadn't stored anywhere. Um, and I'll, I'll, end, I'll end up with this little cartoon here. Uh, you know, to, to you know, make your day. And uh, it looks like we have a lot of uh, time, and I'll, I'll take questions as, as long as uh, Francis wants to hang around or if he wants to start the music again. Um, and as I said, I've got my... Oh, no. Okay, we're going to questions. Um, there's my... Uh, Phone number, email address, and, uh, and again, as I went through this rather quickly. Uh, as I said, you can have a, uh, a presentation on files, just how to manipulate files and what you can do with files and store files. You can have it on different ways of folders. If you can right-click on a folder, there's many different options. Um, you know, on, on drives, you know, there's many different things you can have a whole program. But I just <clears throat> want to give you an overview of, of storage starting with the files. And basically, you think of it, here are the files, and how do I want to store them? And, you know, that's what you're storing is files. And so you don't big, you don't get the big picture. You start with the small picture. Where do I want to store my files? And then you can put them wherever you, where you need to and what basic uses. Again, sensitive data. Again, it's good, you know, if you're going to transfer it. I know a lot of people that uh, keep their sensitive data on a flash drive, uh, but that's easier to lose. I'd, I'd go to a little bit bigger drive. And uh, so I've got a couple of spreadsheets of mine, and I just, uh, it's on a separate drive, and I, I pull it up. Um, so, you know, this is just when you need it. And I got, you know, a lot of stuff stored in the cloud. I don't store uh, what I call sensitive information, uh, pictures, movies, files. I'm working on for APC, UG, or computer group, and that type of stuff. Uh, nothing real ticketed. Okay. I think, I think. 
Hang on. Uh, okay. As I said, I'm scrolling back through here to see if, uh, you know, if there's any questions I missed. A lot of people had some good ideas about. Well, yeah. Yeah, how to make a file. Okay, well, it, it's a little complicated. I mean, you go into. Let's take you. Just very simply, I'm answering Mary Salazar's question. Demonstrate how to make a file and store it from beginning to end. Uh, let's use, you go in and you create a Word document. And let's say it's a thing you're printing out for your, your club uh, meeting. And you're having a, you know, brownie sale. So you, you pick up and you create a Word document with a graphic and, you know, brownies here, you know, 50 cents a piece. And you put it off and you want to save it so that next month if you want to be able to save cookies here. So you create the Word document, and you save the Word document. Uh, and I'm not going to, you know, you, the Word document, you know, you've got the option to save, save as, and that type of thing. Now, the question is, where do you want to save this document? Uh, if you don't have a whole lot of files, you may be able to put this in, you know, under my document, under, you know, I'd probably put it under... Uh, to, you know, put it under what I call a computer club stuff. And then under that, I would put in, uh, you know, brochures or a pamphlet or something or, uh, or, you know, meeting notices. And then scroll down to that in the, when you save as, then you just go into the file folder and, and save it as that. The question is, where do you want to save that? You can go to a different drive letter, uh, or whatever you want to do as to where you've got it. And as I said, it'd be, if I had a, the ability to do a screenshot, you know, show them how to save and you just go back to do it. It's just like, you know, when you try to save something to my document or open this file, you've got to go to where it was. So uh, that's the, the easiest way to do it is you can save as and you just save it where you want to save it to begin with and you really don't have to move it around. Um, okay, that was an iPad question. Does anybody have a question that uh, okay, that said I, I didn't see any Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but as I said, a lot of stuff, as I said, you can read this. Yeah. And I don't really know how many people, to quite honestly, with you, actually uh, get infected if you've got the right malware and stuff. Maybe I just haven't seen it. But if no one has any other questions, I think uh, Francis has got to change rooms, change uh, presenters, because he's got to go back over to the other room. So, um, and again, you know, feel free to email me with any questions. And um, as I said, I have a program that we use called Zoom. So, you know, it's very easy for me to uh, share my computer screen with you, and we can probably talk a little bit in detail and give you a little bit more, uh, a better and hands-on because I think that uh, if I was making this presentation to the user group, I could, you know, bring up and, and answer your question and demonstrate. 